So uh, to be honest, I'm very, very excited. Um, and I want to tell you the next minute something about um, the diagnosis of um, facial, um, fetal facial cleft. So with an incidence um, of about two in thousand, um, fetal facial clefts are one of the most frequent uh, congenital malformations. So it's very useful to be able to handle them. The prenatal diagnosis is very important to prepare parents in order to avoid traumatic situations after birth. And furthermore, the correct diagnosis of the involved structures helps counseling the parents uh, regarding the further treatment after birth. So, what are the tools we need for correct diagnosis of fetal facial clefts? You see these four planes. And with these four planes, you are able to make a correct diagnosis of all fetal facial clefts. So the first one, that's uh, the coronal frontal section with a depiction of the nose twills, the tip of the nose, the upper lip, and uh, uh, both lips. So, and uh, in this view, normally it's not so difficult to find uh, defects here of the upper lip. And when you find a, lip, a cleft lip, so the next step has to be the assessment of the alveolus. And for this, you have to get an axial plane, you see here, the alveolar ridge with the alveolar cavities. This here, inside the foramen, you see here the fusion lines. The fusion lines are between the incisors and the cannon tooth. And this whole segment with uh, the median part of the lip and uh, the incisors, it's called the premaxilla. This one is the primary palate. And uh, the incisor frame is a uh, um, uh, border between the primary and the secondary palate. So the clefts in the alveolar ridge you have to find here between the second incisor and the canine tooth. So, when you find a cleft now here, so then the problem starts. And the problem is here, this black hole. The problem of the assessment of the palate, the most uh, common problem are the surrounding osteostructures. Um, causing uh, shallowing artifacts and um, avoiding the assessment of the palate. Two other points are the dome-shaped structure of the palate and uh, the fact that hard and soft palate are not in one plane. So, what to do? So, the good news, actually, it's not so bad. Because it's not really necessary to visualize the whole palate. Because the defects of a palate lie in the midline, it's enough to see the soft palate in the midline to find out whether the palate is closed or not. When you make this diagnosis, you have to be very, very careful with the insonation angle. Okay, you see here a profile, and I'm changing the insonation angle. If the sound comes more from above, I wait a moment. Now the sound comes more from above. Then you have here shadowing artifacts. You can't see the palate. Now I change the intonation angle. So more coming, coming from below. Then the soft palate appears here. OK? So what you have to do is you have to use the window between the both yaws. And then you can clearly identify here behind the tongue the soft palate here with the overlay. I want to um, uh, um, focus here a little bit on the position of the tongue. I come back to this later. This one here is the normal position of a tongue. You see the tip of the tongue between the yaws behind the upper lip. And here is uh, uh, this uh, pharyngeal space. It's wide open to um, uh, to have um, um, the, uh, to hold the um, airways open. So I want to be honest. When you want to make this diagnosis, you have to train this view very extensively. You will not be able to diagnose this cleft palate if you are not 100% sure 
in detecting the normal conditions. That's very, very important. So, this view isn't, um, to get this view can be very difficult, so um, it would be helpful to have other indicators for routine diagnosis that can indicate that this fetus has a cleft palate. So, the challenge is with which fetus might have isolated cleft palate. So, we have two indicators for this. So, this one is a chematic um, uh, uh, representation of a coronary view in this uh, plane um, in the seventh week of gestation. You see here the nose septum, you see the palate plates of both sides, and so you see the tongue here. The first step is the tongue has to sink down. Then the palate plates can straighten up, and then the closure of the palate can start. So that's why the sinking of the tongue is um, what depends from the size and um, the growth of the mandibula. That's why fetuses with smaller mandibulas often have dif disturbed closure of the palate. So one of the indications is micro knasir. All fetuses with micro knasir are suspicious to have isolated cleft palate. But that's not all, because you see here different profiles from children with isolated cleft palate. You see here severe um, um, uh, retro, micro knasirs, but you see here profiles, they're, they're quite normal. You wouldn't expect cleft, so another indicator would be helpful. And um, there's one, and the key for this is um, the ovula. Why the ovula? So, the closure of the secondary palate always works in the same way. That's very important. Always, same in the, in the, uh, always works in the same way. It starts at the incisive foramen and goes continuously in the dorsal direction. Imagine this like the closure of a zipper. This one is the closure of the palate. So, the completely closed zipper are the normal conditions. The almost completely closed zipper is the mildest form of isolated cleft palate, the uvula bifida, and so on. And the wide open zipper is the, pal uh, is the cleft of hard and soft palate. So this means the uvula is the always affected structure in all cases of cleft palate. So the other way around, that means a normal uvula rules out a cleft palate. So, and you see the defects always lie in the midline. So, how to visualize the uvula? There are two approaches. So, the first one starts with a horizontal plane here. This is a plane you um, measure the head and you check um, uh, brain structures. And um, from this um, plane, you move the transducer parallel to this plane in the caudal direction. Then here opens the pharynx. You come to the soft palate and the uvula. Sometimes you have to um, uh, move the um, transducer a little bit to find the uvula. That's here in the ultrasound, the horizontal plane. So I move the transducer in the caudal direction. Then here in the center, it opens the pharynx. And then you see here this. Uh, structure, and uh, because of its a typical echogenic pattern, we called it um, the equal sign, because it looks like an equal sign. The other approach is um, from a coronal frontal section, you can see here. So you move the transducer also in a um, parallel to this plane. Then you come here in the pharynx. You can um, 
um, orientate in the larynx and the epiglottis. Sometimes you have to um, search here the pharyngeal space. This is this approach. You see here, larynx, epiglottis, and here also the equal sign. So that's the point in um, routine examination. If you see the equal sign in this way, you can be sure that the pallet is intact. But please remember, we speak about an indicator. So the absence of the equal sign doesn't prove a cleft pellet. It's only an indicator that it could be. And in this case, you have to examine the pellet in the mid sagittal section. I'm too fast. <laughs> so I want to show you here some examples. This was a fetus, it was a completely unremarked fetus. Um, I found nothing, uh, um, no, no, other, no other defects. So, and you see here, I'm searching the coronal section um, through the pharynx, um, and I search here for the uvula. Huh? You see here the tongue. I go back to the um, to the pharynx, and I search. I'm, I'm searching here in the pharynx for, for the equal sign, but I couldn't find the equal sign. So this is the indication it could be. So now the next step is to uh, the assessment of the pellet in the mid sagittal section. And then you see this here, okay? This, uh, these are the normal conditions and this is our child. And you can clearly see here, here, here's a soft pellet with the ovula, the tongue, the wide open space of the pharynx. You see here the absence of the soft palate and of the hard palate here. And, uh, but, but what we see in this case here, a normal position of the tongue. That's, uh, that's very important for the postpartal treatment because um, not all fetuses with isolated cleft palate have a glossoptosis and a respiratory problem after birth. So it's more a function of the mandibula. And um, if the mandibula is quite okay, and the, the position of the tongue is okay, so you, you haven't ex to expect a, a respiratory problem after birth. Okay? But you have surely, very clearly, an isolated cleft palate. You see here, after birth, it was the pellet, the hard, and the soft pellet. So, next example. There was not such good conditions. The BMI was uh, higher, and I want to show you that it um, made, made fun function too. Okay, I'm searching here in the pharyngeal space um, for um, the equal sign, and I cannot find the equal sign. It was an unremarkable fetus uh, too. So, next step, assessment of the palate in the midline. And then you see here the following situation. Here you can see a part of the palate. Here, see, you can see it? part of the soft pellet, but it's markedly too short. And it doesn't end with the uvula, you see here, the normal conditions, okay? So in this case, we made a diagnosis of an isolated cleft pellet only of the soft pellet, okay? And you see here, the picture, postpartal, okay? So, you see, um, you can detect um, um, isolated cleft palate only in the soft palate too. So, here we have another, another indicator that's um, not a normal profile, okay? You can see a markedly micro retrogress here. So, in this case, I don't search for the equal sign because I have an indication 
that it could be because of the micro we took in us here. So the next step to check um, uh, the palette in the mid sagittal section. And then you see here this, sit this situation, OK? So it's more difficult to differentiate because the tongue is very, very, um, the, the, the pharyngeal space is very narrow, and the tongue is um, lying very deep here. You see, there's um, no, no space between um, uh, the um, posterior wall of the pharynx and uh, the tongue. But you can see it. If you are trained, you can see it, that there is no, um, no soft palate behind the tongue. When, when, when the child is drinking and moving the tongue, Look here. OK? You can clearly see it. OK? So, but this isn't totally other situation. You have surely an isolated left palate, but here I want to focus on the position of the tongue. That's a very abnormal position of the tongue, you see? The tip of the tongue is lying here. Normally, it's lying here. And the space. Um, between uh, the posterior uh, wall of the pharynx, uh, the tongue is very, very narrow. So this is very important for the clinical situation because you have to expect respiratory problems after birth. And it can be very, um, um, very difficult um, um, to uh, treat such uh, children after birth. So you see this here after birth. That's a device especially uh, for these uh, children uh, with uh, such a plate to, um, uh, to, to avoid the glossoptosis. And um, um, it can be very uh, difficult to um, um, make such a plate here. So that's a situation for a special team. And it's very, very useful to, to know this after, uh, prenatally. So, and um, here are two examples. Uh, so, you can, uh, how to, you can use the assessment of the palate for the um, um, di uh, diagnosis in um, uh, cleft um, lip palate. Okay, you see here the frontal coronal section with this cleft on the side, unilateral cleft of the lip. So, what is the next step? The next step is to check. The alveolus. No. The alveolus. In this case, it's lip, the next stru structure, alveolus. Okay? So, the axial plane with the depiction here of the alveolar ridge, and here you can clearly see the defect of the alveolar ridge. And the next structure, palate. So, the midline, tongue, and you can clearly see here the absence of the soft palate in the midline. So the correct diagnosis of this is unilateral, cleft, cleft lip, cleft alveolus, and cleft palate. Remember, in cases with cleft lip palate, you never see glossoptosis, because the glossoptosis is a function of the growth of the mandibula. So in these cases, you don't have to expect um, any um, respiratory problems. Okay? So another case, you see, again, a unilateral cleft. Next step, check the alveolus. So here the axial plane. And you see here, between the incisor and the canine tooth, you see here the smaller defect. And then the next step, to check the palate. And here, we can see here the tongue. And we see clearly behind the tongue, the soft palate with the uvula. So here, the correct diagnosis is unilateral cleft lip, cleft alveolus, but intact palate. And that makes clinically a very big difference because the problems after birth with hearing, speech, and so on, is a problem of the cleft palate. So this situation is for the parents very good because they know, okay, we have uh, 
little, uh, we, we have fewer problems, okay? It's a better prognosis. Uh, no, 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 it's not one incisor. You have, in this case, I think you have the two incisors because the cleft is very, very small, okay? But it's very, it is, it's not a syndrome one, from one incisor. In some, sometimes the second incisor um, is, is not there, but uh, not in all cases. And I would expect in this case, with this small, with this small cleft, um, that likely the second incisor is um, present, okay? So, um, this is a postpartum um, uh, um, uh, uh, picture. You see here the cleft of the alveolus and uh, the cleft lip. So, um, thank you for attention. I, I, I would be very happy. <laughs> so, the head here is lying down, okay? Here we have uh, the back here on the left side. And uh, the head is here, okay? Now, we have to focus a little bit. Okay, so here we are in the plane to measure the head. We have the falx, thalamus, cavum, septipelucidi. Now I move the transducer in the cauda direction, cerebellum, ob. Okay, now we have the situation that the head, I can see it here, that in this position the head is flexed because you can't see any fluid here inside the pharynx, so the head is surely flexed here. That's a bad position for this. So, now, here, you see it. Okay? Here? Yes, it's not much fluid, but it works too. And you see here clearly the equal sign. So this is the step in between a diagnosis. You say, okay, the palate is intact. So here you can, uh, you can uh, finish your um, diagnostic regarding cleft palate, okay? So, you see here, now it's very bad position, okay? So, can you mal auf die linke Seite drehen? So, um, we try to speak with a child. And come a bisschen, bisschen zu mir rüber. Okay. So, I try to get here a frontal coronal section. Okay. So, the arm in front of the face. Okay, so now a little bit better. Okay, so here we have the depiction of the lips, upper lip, nose twirl, and we see clearly the lips are intact. There is no problem with the lips. So, and if you have these um, features, okay, if you have seen the equal sign, and you have seen, um, closed lips, so um, it's sure that there's no defect. But you haven't to search for defects only of the heart pellet or only of the alveolus. That doesn't exist. If the, the system is closed, uh, 
in the in, in the region of the uvula and on, um, in the region of the lips, the rest is closed too. Is there anything you would like to see from the audience? So I think everybody's deeply impressed. <laughs> Sorry. I think everybody's deeply impressed watching you scanning, and it looks so easy. Yeah, it's not so, it's not so hard. It it's not so hard. You see here now clearly again the equal sign. It's not so hard. It's, it's a question of uh, training, okay? It's, it's very important, I said uh, every time, it's very important to train it. You can't use it um, um, if you need it. Um, um, in in, uh, in uh, uh, situations you have uh, suspicious findings, you have to do it over months with every fetus you see in this age of gestation. You have to be very, very sure with the normal conditions. Okay? Thank you very much, Lucas. Thank you. Okay, w one moment. Okay. <laughs> one moment here. We have a chance, okay? Ah, yes. Okay, submit the sagittal section there. Oops. Okay. If you, when you are trained, you have seen it yet there, okay? But that's a question of training. So, Sometimes you have just a few seconds to see it, and then you have to be sure that you have seen it, okay? So, but this is a good situation for the alveolus. You see here, the axial plane. Oops. <laughs> here, okay. The alveolus. Wonderful. Alveolar rich, okay? And these are the points you have to search for the clefts. This one is the cannon tooth, and here are the two incisors, okay?